Later, Tanner. Stop the thread. I won the battle. All right, I'm gonna take this rather large post oak down. The thing is, I'll air every bit of the trees over that house right here. Look at the curvature on that dude. It can't fall yet. I'm gonna have to take some of the top out of it. See that big limb up there, it broke out. Post oaks are, uh, they're kind of like uh, a pecan. They're pretty brittle. And we've had so much rain that everything's foliaged out 100%. So the tree's got a lot of weight, a lot of moisture in them. And they're just heavy, man. So why do trees grow out over houses for? See that one's curved out over the house. See that oak over there is curved out over the house. Even that crepe myrtle's trying to curve over the house a little bit. Even this Bradford pear's trying to go that way too. The reason why is because sunlight. That's where the hole is for the uh, where the sunlight is. And trees are drug addicts for sunlight and water. And that's where they're gonna go. So uh, we'll ease up here. Turn this key on on this lift and. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna get the limbs out of it. It's not a clean up, just gonna drop them right here. He said, Don't worry about the yard, nothing. Just get the tree, just get it down. Probably gonna get it down to the fork, the big fork up there, and then I'll cut and drop the spar like right in here. So let's get after it. Then these limbs and these post oaks, they just snap. Okay, so they don't they don't hold real good at all and there's in this tree here there's a lot of bad stuff in it too I want to show y'all something things to look for and this is any homeowner can look for it in their tree you don't have to be a tree cutter an arborist you don't have to be anything you can just as long as your eyesight's good you can see it you see that hole right there in the end of that limb see what has happened was years ago this thing had a limb that came off out that way it snapped off even broke the branch collar off of it well when it did that's the reason why topping is not good if you top that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna start that rot in it. And that's basically what happened on this. That limb broke out. That started rotting right there, okay? So you can see that. You know that's bad. You look down here. I just peeled some of this bark back right here. You see all that right there? And then you see this right here. All right. All of that is not very good stuff. You see this? See the carpenter ants coming out of it right there? So as that thing waits, it's going to fail. See that one's got a big old limb peeled out of it right there. That's the one that had that broke, just recently broke the limb out of it over there on that side. But I just wanted to uh, point that stuff out so you can see another one up yonder. Anytime you see those real tight unions where they're like that between your fingers, they're real tight. They're not like spread out like you're between your thumb. So like that's a pretty good union right there. When you get up and you get up in them where they're really tight like between your fingers, that's called bark inclusions and those ain't any good.
So you see all that right there. It's, and it's not going to get any better. So a tree, when a tree gets damaged or you cut it, okay, trees seal, they don't heal. They compartmentalize is what they do. So if you are going to do some tree trimming, uh, you know, with your blades or something like that, here's a couple of simple little things that will help you out. So big cuts are not desirable, but sometimes you do have to make a big cut and that's just part of it. But if you can stay away from a big cut like this, you're better off to do it. But if you have to, or you have to make a small cut or anything, this area right here is called the branch collar is what it's called. Okay, you need to cut on this side of the branch collar. So if I was gonna make a cut on this one, let's pretend like this is a three or four inch limb. What I would do is you want to make the one, two, three cut is what it's called. You cut it under, you cut it right here, drop that piece, and then you come back right here, just outside the branch collar and cut it. Why is the branch collar so important? The branch collar is so important because on a smaller limb, the branch, this is curving around trying to seal back off. That's what the branch collar will do. Well, on a big cut, it just, they just ain't hardly going to seal off on a big end like that so don't cut it flush against a tree and for god's sakes don't cut it straight down to where when it starts to pivot over it peels and it peels the whole side of your tree off i see that happen all the time there's one at the church up there pecan tree that somebody just trimmed up there and they peeled some of the limbs they actually cut it right against the trunk so they cut the branch collar off that tree will never seal back over and it protects itself is what it does. But on a big cut or big tear like this right here, it's not going to be able to seal itself off. So I hope that helps maybe, you know, somebody or something to, uh, to kind of know. But uh, we're fixing to take this limb. This is the one that's got the end broke out of it up there. I'm gonna cut it with a 550 Husqvarna and I'm gonna cut it out here and I'm gonna leave a stub on it. So because it ain't going to hurt anything if I leave it stuck. So I still had a ways to go and you see how much of that it popped. I don't cut a notch in them like that a lot of times. I just undercut it because I want that, I don't want that limb to pivot down any. I want it to close that curve and then pop and come down. And a lot of times they'll land relatively flat. All right, here's a really good example. See, that's the branch collar right there. It's a small limb, so if you're gonna cut it, cut it right here. See, I'm outside of the branch collar, so you can come back and kind of trim it up a little bit. There you go. Now, if this tree wasn't gonna be cut down, what that would do is that would seal right over that right there, just as sturdy as could be. And when you start getting up in the limbs like this, this size and larger like that it's just kind of a gamble as to whether they will or not more than likely they won't seal because it's too big of a cut on it but these smaller ones like this right here and that one right there they typically will i'm just going to take from the top down on this one let it peel go on down to the ground get it out of the way i had a guy in one of my real recent videos that i just uh posted the one where i took down that post oak that was over that house and he commented and his comment was this right here he said uh he said i've got a good friend of mine that has a humongous cottonwood that's over his house the limbs on it are probably 60 foot long he said the quote that he got to remove that tree was ten thousand dollars he said i think that's too high and he said what are your thoughts on that and so i did i responded back to him and i told him i said uh i said for trees like that like you're describing over a house and a full cleanup and everything 
I said ten to fifteen thousand dollars on a on one is that's that's a fair price. Sometimes a lot of times people think that like these trees. I mean, if you look around at this tree, the limbs in it are as large as trees in it. And if you're having to rope this stuff down and you and you've got to clean this stuff up, if you've never cleaned a tree up of this size like this, you have no idea what it takes to do it. Not only that, but if you're over house you got to rope all this stuff down or either you got to have a crane or something like that and see look up there you see all that rod that's in that in that up there on that limb you know so when the guy that takes a tree down the guy or the company or whatever it is entity that takes the tree down they're assuming a humongous risk any different than a doctor or a lawyer it's the same thing and it's very expensive it's like i said in in a video you know you wouldn't go down the street if you needed heart surgery to your next door neighbor working out of his uh garage to get your heart worked on trees the same way it's a huge risk for me or for rook or for whoever's taking the trees down to take them down and that's the reason why you hire people like us is to uh alleviate that to where you're trusting us not to tear your property up or anything and get it down in a safe manner so uh you know there's trees out there are there twenty thousand tree dollar trees out there yes there are twenty thousand dollar trees out there are there trees out there that are more than twenty thousand dollars yes there are uh there's uh tree work is not is not cheap uh you know you dealing with a lot a lot of different stuff you know a lot of different variables Let's see that rotten spot right there in that limb uh he's making the right call on this tree to get it down and uh very good call on it so we're gonna bomb a few more of these limbs The guy did comment back after i responded and he said he appreciated me responding he said he wouldn't he said that helped out he said he didn't realize it so if you're if you know ask yourself would you take a tree down this size and completely clean it up and haul it off for two or three hundred dollars and you got two or three guys on the ground working you got insurance uh you got machinery equipment running uh no you can't you can't uh you can't do that you wouldn't do that uh, nobody would you look at a tree of this magnitude right here they require a lot of work sometimes it helps to talk to these limbs man All right, we're really making this tree look bad now. Let's see where I'm at. I didn't cut these two big limbs all the way back on this. They were out over the edge of the roof right there. And so now I'm fixing to work this one here back. See that bad spot in it right there? It's a wonder that limb has not broke out and then went down there and knocked his gutter off in there. So, uh, Ain't gonna be too many more cuts. I done made a bunch of cuts and ain't gonna be a whole lot more and I'll be able to uh, put a rope in it and and uh, we're gonna pull her on down. Just let them peel. No back cut. Yeah. 
And just like that, we can take that and lean them out to have the bad spot on it now. gonna go out I didn't telescope any I'm still on the main one we're going out now dude we're gonna go out we're gonna get these three or four right here we'll cut the ones on the bottom first and I'll cut the upper ones that way it don't when the top one if I was to cut it it might hit that and make it do something funky this one we are down to the last few cuts on this uh, behemoth and I'm going to put a rope in it and we're going to put it on the ground We are very high up here now too, by the way. It takes that limb a while to hit the ground down there from up here, man. That same one you just see me cut the ends out of is uh, that one right there. Just, um, just put the rope in the tree. It's a three quarter stable braid with a running bowling on it. Probably going to take it out there to that pine tree out there. Put a redirect on it. And then take my truck and sit over there and back up with it and pull that away. And pull the tree right down in there. I wanted to go between that seesaw thingy down there with the tires on it and that oak. That's where I wanted to land. First, you got to go up there and finish that last little bit up there, though, and get that get that top. And then we're going to let her sail here, man. All right, here comes the top. Later, Taylor. She's ready to fall now. You could not have cut this tree. See that rot right there in it. You could not have cut this tree whole. This thing probably might have missed the house, but it would have ended up going right down through there even if you'd had it notched over there because it would have pulled on that hinge like they ain't no tomorrow and chances are it could have kind of started and it went bam right on the house insane weight in these trees now to go right down through there with no worries so let's fold this beast up right here all right that's what it looks like just a spar standing there that thing's gonna make a thud when it hits the ground too Look at all the debris. 
So I'm going to cut my way into it to get to it there. And I'm kind of thinking it's probably got some metal in it maybe. I always assume that all these trees do. In these yards, I've seen something that looks a little suspicious. Maybe not. Like that area right there, that area right there, maybe. I don't know. So I'm gonna notch it with the 661 because I got a 36 inch bar on it, and then I'm gonna bore it with the uh, 400 with a 28 inch bar on it. It'll be my newest 400 because my other 400 has a, a 25 inch bar. So you can see, see so the ropes up there comes down this is that biggest DMM pulley that they make so this is my redirect this pulley I think this pulley costs about 600 bucks it's a hoss you can see it right in my hand right there so I got it on a three quarter right there and it comes right here goes back to the truck trucks in four low this is this is tight really tight right here so it may be enough when i bore out the back of it it may go ahead and pull it on over i don't know we'll see if it's got enough on it to to do that or not it may or may not that's kind of a gamble if it does or not if it does good if it don't i'll just walk over here get in the truck crank it up back it up pull it right on over redirects are really handy when you're in tight areas and get you by all the stuff but uh yeah i'm gonna gas up my 400 and um get to yeah i gotta put some gas in the 661 too both of them got sharp chains on them <laughs> camera i'm not a hundred percent but i do believe that tree is hollow it sure felt like it when that thing went in there like that it may not be but yeah, it sure felt like it come on see i'll put y'all over here on this trailer that way you can watch the route see what the rope does on it this is mr dale's place and he watches all my videos so he's gonna be very interested in this one knowing him from way back grew up with his with his daughters and, and everything went to church with him all right let's go bore the other side out
Let's go inspect this stone. I may be bad and wrong on this too, but I think as soon as I board in on this side over here and got my hinge right and took off, I'm almost certain I hit some metal. That tree. I hope I'm wrong about that, but it sure felt like it and then the saw kind of quit cutting on me like what it ought to. I see the stain on it there now. Look at that tree. Mr. Dale. Look at all that. Yep. See there's the metal. <clears throat> I have hit metal so many times here recently man. Oh gosh tree was no good. Dead gummit. It's gonna be a nail. I actually hit it when I was born. So I was right on both suspicions. It was hollow and it had metal in it. God, I had just, I had just got this chain back to where it was, it was cutting decent. Not like I like, but better. Oh, there's metal right there, look. See all that? I ain't sticking my saw back in that tree no more. <clears throat> it's just... Man, when you feel it and you hit it, it just breaks your heart. And those chains there, are, they're the 33 RSs are not cheap. I've got EXL at the house. I can cut my own loose off of them. I may just cut a loop. Off it. I may file it once and see what I do with it. Mr. Dale, it ain't your fault, man. It's not. It's, 
it's just, that's just the way it is on these yard trees. It's just the way that it is. And so many people all the time ask me, why don't you haul these logs of the mill, haul these logs of the mill? You, these mills will not take these logs, y'all. These big mills, somebody small, you know, got a, a little saw mill or something like that, man, you know, you can give them to them, but I mean, Tyler don't even want nothing like that. I mean, if he hits something like that in his circle mill, it, he just he just ruined about $2,500 worth of stuff. And it's not worth it, you know. I mean, that's about a $50 chain right there, almost $50 chain, compared to, you know, a $2,500 circle blade. I did jump on this tractor. He told me I could use it if I need to. I need to go put it back over there in the spot where I got it from. If you ever use something with somebody that lets you use it, always put it back. You know, put it back, put it back better than you found it. I pushed some of these limbs out of the way right here with it. But... Mm -mm 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 -mm. Well, that's a thumper. So, I think in the... Uh, like in the police academy or law enforcement academy, they train the guys there to stop the threat and that's what i just did right there i stopped that threat it's so old 39 30. man these are some beasts those tractors you can't kill them man they're just they're just good they're old work horses man they just get with the program you know what i mean so it's a cranking gear yeah, boy. All right. Man, I have got a ton of hours on, not a 3930, but a, uh, an 04 5000. Holy cow. Now, the worst part about this whole deal now is just putting my rope up. That three-quarter stable braid, 200 foot of it. That stuff ain't no joke, man. It's heavier than a sack of lead, man. Stop the threat. I won the battle. That's what I'm talking about. Hope y'all enjoyed that. Cotton top three stripes again, baby. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.